Is the latest COVID surge perhaps slowing a bit? Hi everyone here at Common Douglas Public Health to again speak with the director, Dr. Janet Meemark, about the latest with this COVID surge, the effects on the hospital, the younger people, and a plea to please not take a drug meant for a parasitic infection. But first, the overview. Our situation doesn't seem to be getting better. Um, when we're looking at the state of Georgia, um, over the last 14 days, we've had 71% um, increase in cases for COVID-19. And But when we're looking at our um, younger age range, and some people may be watching this, our five through 17 year olds, we've had 60% jump in numbers for them. And when you break it down further from 11 to 17, that's actually, the number has doubled in the last week. And so we have um, really seen an increase in school aged children. Um, and, and I guess that makes sense because they're in in school and out and about now um, in also in schools over the last three weeks we've had four times as many outbreaks um, throughout the state of Georgia for um, school outbreaks um, our, our hospitalization so since last weekend has more than doubled so we went from 295 COVID hospitalizations to 669 in the state of Georgia and um, many of you probably heard that the National Guard has been deployed and so there are over a hundred National Guard members that are trying to help our hospitals the hospitals um, even in our area but they're even worse in other areas of the state are very very strained right now and they're really having to um, just you know really make things do and, and try to take people as best they can. So it is it's critical. Um, it's a critical situation. When we're looking at deaths, there's also been an increase in deaths. Remember, this is the lagging indicator. It takes a few weeks after. And so um, in, over the last 14 days, we've had over 100% increase in deaths in the state of Georgia, and that's doubled since last week as well. Um, you know, we're, we pray and hope that we won't see as many deaths as the first um, surge because we vaccinated a lot of those vulnerable people. Um, but even though, you know, some people, you know, talk about that death rate, that it's a, you know, a lower death rate. But remember, you don't have to die from something to be debilitated for the rest of your life. So um, we really don't want to have death to be our outcome that we're looking at here. We're really trying to decrease the number of infections that's happening throughout our um, community. So let's look at Cobb County. I wish I had better numbers for Cobb County. So we are at 771 cases per 100,000. So that is almost eight times um, what high transmission would be. So we're very, very high. And um, the positivity rate is still hovering about 12.7% of all cases coming in. And we, are, we have really increased testing. You're gonna see several testing locations that are gonna be um, stood up um, this week. So we're working with the uh, Department of Public Health to get uh, more locations so people have testing options. and school Schools will be getting testing as well. So I know Cobb and Marietta um, school systems are working on getting testing locations for their schools to help with that situation as well. Our own hospitalization, so in COVID, we've seen um, over a 46% increase in COVID hospitalizations over the last week, um, and 40% of our ICU beds are COVID um, cases. Right now, we have a very severe critical shortage of ICU beds at this time, and this is something that we're gonna see. You see it throughout the state, but in your own community, this is what we're seeing as well. We've had a 60% increase in deaths ourselves in, in Cobb County. So this is, um, we're starting to see the effects of, um, you know, the, the cases that we've been having and then hospitalizations and unfortunately deaths will follow that. One thing you said about hospitalizations is that you're seeing more younger patients and which is a little bit concerning to me because it used to be the narrative that the younger people could get COVID but not necessarily become symptomatic but could be carriers but now apparently they are becoming symptomatic and going to hospitals. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, so um, right now, um, uh, over 50% of cases are between 40 and 69 years old right now. And so, um, and then we have a lot of younger people that are also being hospitalized as well, people in their 30s and 40s, and you've seen multiple th deaths throughout. A lot of that is because people are unvaccinated. You know, we are over, um, in the hospitalizations, uh, over 90% are people that are unvaccinated. And so this continues to be a problem. And so, you know, our rates of vaccination, we're just over about 55 percent about for first dose, um, that leaves a lot of folks that um, are still unvaccinated. So when you have that many people that are um, in circulation and vulnerable to the virus, that's what's going to happen. The, the vaccine still protects against severe illness and death. And so we do have breakthrough cases, yes, but um, it's still protecting you. So that's why it's so very important because it, it at least dampens your chances of, um, of having severe cases.
So the FDA gave its uh, final thumbs up to the Pfizer vaccine, which is the one that I that I got many months ago. How significant is that, and what do you think that could mean to a lot of people? Yeah, so so it's great that we were able to hear that. So you got the Pfizer vaccine, and my own 13-year-old received the Pfizer vaccine. So you both had it done under the emergency use authorization. FDA did a full review, and this is a, a more in-depth review than they did with the emergency use authorization. So they actually take a look at um, the entire um, data set much deeper, and they actually will visit the facilities and take a look at, they have you know, more data to look at side effects and things like that. So they issue the, the full FDA approval for 16 and over for the Pfizer vaccine. We still have emergency use down to 12 years of age, and so that's important, and we still have emergency use for boosters as well, and that Moderna and Pfizer, you can do your booster shots if you are immunocompromised, so those are the people that got transplants and things like that. So what's important about the FDA approval is that this puts the, the Pfizer um, vaccine on par with your regular medications that are out in circulation, so your cardiac medication your hypertension, diabetes, um, those medications are all FDA approved as well. So they have the full stamp of approval, which makes it so that it is um, able to go more widely into circulation now. And I think it gives people a more of a measure of comfort now, knowing that the full review has been done. So you should feel as comfortable taking a, a Pfizer vaccine and hopefully Moderna soon as you would any of your medications that you're taking for any other conditions. Well, speaking of... Uh drugs. There's always been this conversation throughout this pandemic about different drugs that could be effective in treating COVID-19. And they kind of come and go. They're dismissed and people still believe in them. And I guess that continues. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm really kind of surprised I have to have this conversation with folks. I, I thought it was just kind of a um, like an urban legend type of thing, but we're he hearing that people are taking this medication called ivermectin. Um, ivermectin is a medication that's meant for parasitic infections. So um, if you have um, strong strongyloiditis, which is a roundworm infection, um, that's something, and I've never even prescribed or seen anybody have that before. Um, if you have Norwegian scabies, um, that might be something your doctor would prescribe for you. Um, or if you could, if you had river blindness for some reason, those are some of the, you know, there aren't that many things that uh, ivermectin is actually FDA approved for. And so those are a few of those. It is not um, a safe medication for you to take. And so I urge people to be very, very cautious. Um, do not take this and do not take it um, from a, um, a animal supply store or livestock um, don't take those medications. Um, you can have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. You can have seizures, and you can you can die from this medication. It can interact with your other medications, and you can have some very, very severe consequences. So please do not take this medication. It is not safe, it is not approved, and it does not work. So do not do that. So how, how frustrating is it for you as we go through all this to, to see these narratives pop up. I mean, they primarily come through social media. Uh, they get a little bit into the mainstream, uh, not just about taking drugs, but just really about the pandemic in general. Yeah. I mean, just what is your frustration level about that? You know, it's very frustrating. Um, I think we've learned a lot during this pandemic, but um, learning about uh, the power of misinformation and false information has been has been startling. And so this is why we continue to try to get the truth out there to people. But, um, you know, I've talked about this before, about the issue of, of kind of data mining and what, you know, social media does. If you if you are looking at something and you have a, an opinion or interest, they are they're taking, you know, a note of that and then they're they're feeding you more things that they feel like you might like and so that kind of thing is is exponential the way it grows and so sometimes the truth will often lose out to that and so once again you know we advise people please go to some trusted sources if someone is telling you to take animal medication that's really this is not a trusted source and this is not something that's safe for you so please um, really take a look at what your um, the sources of the information that you're getting I've heard a lot of people talk about the bell curve. Maybe we're approaching the bell curve on this particular surge. Really, where do, where do you think we are with this latest surge, and, and what does the future hold? 
Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. So um, we feel like um, what we're seeing right now is all from Delta, the Delta variant that's sh pushing all of this. And so um, the report that we got yesterday from the state looks like um, that there is a slowdown of um, numbers of new cases, but they're stopped at a very high level. So we may be stuck at this high level for a while, um, and it may go down or go up. It depends. So this is just a, pr a snapshot in time right now, but. Um, it looks like it is slowing down a little bit, but it is it is <laughs> slowing down at a really high level right now. And so um, unless something happens that we are able to positively do that, um, it's really going to run its course. So it's not shooting up as high. It looks like it's leveling off at a high level. So we hope it will come down um, if we all do what we need to do. All right. Well, that was my last question. What do we need to do? Yeah. Um, things that we need to do. So we need to really look at what's going to help right now. And so I wanted to give some additional information for um, our folks that are vaccinated. And so um, there are some reports coming out that new data is coming out. And you know, because you know we started getting the vaccine in December, and so all this data is being looked at. And there's some reports that the immunity from the vaccine may be waning a little bit. And so we're having more breakthrough infections that are coming through. So you may have heard the president last week talk about getting the booster vaccine, right? To have um, the third dose eight months after your second dose um, of vaccine. So it's important. There's a reason why that, that that is recommended is that, you know, that it looks like the immunity may be going down and we may need to boost it back up. So why is that important? So those of you that have had the vaccine earlier or maybe older, so our senior citizens, your immunity may not be as high as it was. So please be very careful. So when you go out, go ahead and, you know, wear your mask, avoid large crowds and make sure you're distancing from folks and washing your hands and things like that. Um, but it's very important to wear those masks right now because I'm, I'm a little bit nervous myself. I have to say I got my vaccine at the end of December and that puts me right in that window. And I know of friends that have gotten sick right now that um, are vaccinated because it's a right, right around that window of time, about eight months. So please um, wear your mask and wash your hands and keep your distance and watch out for that booster. You can come to um, any location that offers a vaccine that you had had um, to get your booster shot. So um, that's not going to be until September. So we're waiting for that. So please watch out for that. Um, for those of our unvaccinated folks, please, um, you know, I really want you to consider getting the vaccination. If you don't trust me and you don't trust, you know, the, you know, the FDA or what's happening, talk to your, to some of your friends that know that are in the hospital that know what's happening there. I mean, the hospitals are very full and they're full of unvaccinated people. You're, you're really putting yourself at risk. You have an FDA approved vaccine. Please don't take, you know, um, parasitic medicines un unnecessarily. Please take, take what is approved for you so that we can um, try to bring this down and keep this um, pandemic um, from taking over completely.